We're on the trail of a mystery. What does China want in Sri Lanka? There are clues dotted around this verdant country. You just need to know where to look. What we discover, what the truth is, might well have implications for the global cost of living crisis. The head of MI6 last year accused China of using debt traps to gain leverage over countries. The argument is that when countries cannot repay the loans, they are forced to hand over infrastructure assets to China. Assets such as ports, which are useful for China's ability to project its power around the world. Sri Lanka's Hambantota port was built with Chinese investment. But in 2017, Sri Lanka's already cash-strapped government was forced to sell it to a Chinese state company. So was that the Chinese debt trap springing shut? And can we expect to see more of that kind of thing in now bankrupt Sri Lanka and in other developing countries? Because Sri Lanka is by no means the biggest borrower from China. Researchers have estimated Sri Lanka's total debt due to China as around 8% of the size of its national income. But they put the Maldives' debt at 30%, the Republic of the Congo's at 48%, and Djibouti's at 68%. China's ambassador to Sri Lanka agreed to sit down with Newsnight to give Beijing's side of the story. Travelling across Hambantota, it's clearly not just the port which has got Chinese investment. We're just arriving at the Mahinda Rajapaksa Cricket Stadium. Let's have a look. It costs tens of millions of pounds to build, but is struggling to recoup its construction costs. Oh, and it's named after the president's brother. We're still in Hambantota, and here's another project, the hospital, also built with Chinese money. This project, too, has been linked to alleged kickbacks to members of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's family. And let's not forget the international airport and a vast convention centre. Chinese investment also extends up northwest to the capital, Colombo. Port City is a stretch of reclaimed land on the city's shoreline, intended to be a new special economic zone. It was built with Chinese investment cash and is now around half owned by a Chinese company. But importantly, it's not debt, but equity the Chinese own here. The Chinese government is not involved in setting the rules and regulations. So from that standpoint, the government of Sri Lanka is in control. And it's up to the government of Sri Lanka's wish to, to uh, flavour the city, the development of the city in the way it wants to. It is accurate to say that infrastructure development has boomed under Chinese uh, investment, Chinese debt sometimes, but those are things that we've actually needed for a long, long time. So is the debt trap not all it seems? Perhaps we were approaching an answer. The truth is that many independent experts say that we should be wary of the Chinese debt trap narrative and we found quite a lot of evidence here in Sri Lanka which contradicts it. The Hambantota port well, that was instigated by the Sri Lankans, not by the Chinese. And it can't currently be used by Chinese military naval vessels. And actually there's some pretty formidable barriers to that happening. A lot of the projects we've been seeing, well, they feel more like white elephants than they do Chinese global strategic assets. Some say it's possible that what this Chinese lending does is facilitate local corruption more than it does augment Chinese global power. Remnants of Sri Lanka's colonisation by the British Empire are still visible. Yet even if by accident rather than some kind of neo-colonial design, China could end up playing a key role in the fate of many developing nations because of its role as creditor. Sri Lanka's application for a 3 billion IMF bailout is being held up until the fund sees what happens with the country's loans to China, whether they will accept a write down or in the jargon of international finance, a haircut. Right, it's not quite clear whether China would be happy with a haircut, but you can't do this restructuring without China's support. So is that gonna be a problem? It is gonna be a problem because, uh, because it's, China needs to agree to a common solution here. They have lent to a lot of countries that currently seem to be in debt distress. 
So the precedent that they set in Sri Lanka, they might have to follow. Regardless of the debt trap debate, experts warn of another problem regarding China's overseas loans in Sri Lanka and elsewhere, which complicates potential bailouts. Some have argued that even if there is no debt trap, there's a lack of transparency about Chinese loans to many developing countries. Yet researchers estimate half of China's lending to developing countries is not reported to the World Bank or the IMF. The Sri Lankan Prime Minister recently revealed the existence of a $105 million Chinese loan that had not previously been known about. As for that question of whether any Sri Lankan debt restructuring could determine how China treats defaults in many other countries to which it has lent, well, the ambassador pushed back against that suggestion. Perhaps the solution to the mystery of what China wants in Sri Lanka is that it doesn't really know. It didn't engineer this situation, but is having to deal with it on the hoof. The problem is that Sri Lanka and potentially many other countries caught in the vice of this global crisis need support and debt restructuring now. How soon will they get it? That mystery remains to be resolved.